Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be discussing a subject that tends to be a heated topic in RC in general. And that is talking about rates or throws or your endpoint adjustments on the transmitter. Regardless of which term you prefer to use, we're essentially talking about the amount of throw that you get out of a control surface or steering on a radio control vehicle based on how much stick deflection that you go and input on your transmitter. So that's gonna be the topic that we're gonna dive in today. We're gonna to be interested in exactly how do you know if you have too much or too little, or where should you be? Now, the basis for examples that we're gonna use in this specific video are gonna come from radio-controlled airplanes. However, if you drive radio-controlled cars, boats, fly drones, or helicopters, you can use a lot of the same principles and sort of translate it over to that area of the radio controlled hobby. Just before we get into the topic, I wanna to make a couple points. And the first one is, you can adjust your rates inside of your transmitter digitally, and you can also adjust it right on the radio controlled vehicle mechanically. Now when you're going and adjusting rates, if you're gonna go and take from your radio a rate of 50% and drop it down to 30%, that would not be the most ideal thing to do if you can adjust your rates mechanically on your radio control vehicle. Mechanical adjustments should be taken as priority one, because if you don't do that mechanically, you're gonna lose a lot of resolution within that servo, limiting them to 30 to 50% of the range. Ideally, you wanna to try to keep your rates at about 100% and adjust mechanically where possible. And then anything that you can't adjust mechanically, that's where you go and take the transmitter and start digitally adjusting from there. All right, let's jump right into the topic for today. Now to start right off, I strongly believe that there is a significant percentage of radio controlled enthusiasts that could benefit significantly by changing their rates. Changing their rates in a positive way can allow them to fly the aircraft better, land the aircraft better, have more resolution in all the control movements they use throughout an entire flight, have better precision and accuracy of where they're pointing and directing their radio controlled airplane. So let's go into this further by understanding what some of the advantages and disadvantages of high rates versus low rates might mean. When we talk about high rates, we're suggesting that any type of radio controlled stick input here that you have within the transmitter is going to go and have a significant output on your radio controlled airplane you're gonna get a significant deflection of those control surfaces. That's what we're identifying here as high rates. Now having high rates on a radio controlled airplane allows you to make certain that you're going to have enough control authority for essentially everything that you want to do. You can do some very aggressive aerobatics by having high rates. If you don't have high rates and you want to do some of these aerobatics, you're not going to be able to perform some of the more aggressive ones because you won't have the exact control authority that you need to complete that specific aerobatic. That is the major advantage of having high rates. Now on the flip side of the coin here, as soon as you talk about having or minimizing the rates on your radio control transmitter, this is where you can get into more authority, more control, more precision, more accuracy within your radio control model airplane. The way that you get this accuracy is because instead of making fine adjustments like this in order to control the airplane for a significant amount of the flight, you are going to use lower rates, which allow you to essentially use a lot more of the stick travel. Now, when you're using a lot more of the stick travel, you can get precise control out of that airplane. That's essentially the advantage of having lower rates on your radio controlled airplane. Now, a little bit of history so you can get an idea of where I'm coming from. So when I flew radio control airplanes about 10 years ago, I would use some significant high rates. I could just barely move the stick and be able to do everything that I needed to do within my radio controlled airplane. The biggest thing that I didn't realize is how little of the stick motion I was actually using. I didn't realize that I would ever go all the way to full max aileron deflection. 
I thought I had some significant amount of roll rate, but I was getting that significant amount of roll rate just using maybe 60-70% of the stick movement. Another thing is, this only came to me because of video games. I played video games and I always thought that it is best if my hand on a mouse would move extremely minimal so that I didn't have to move much and I could essentially be very quick to react to everything. What I realized is that other players were using a lot different settings within their mouse. They would be able to have a lot more motion within their mouse to increase their accuracy, their precision, and their win ratios. I took everything that I learned and then I translated this all over to the RC radio controlled vehicles that I had and this is where it began to change the way that I fly today. Now that we know the advantages of high and low rates, how do you know that you have either too little or too much rate within your radio control vehicle? Well, it's quite simple based off of what we actually just went through. If you find someone that is willing to just look at how much of the stick that you're using on your transmitter and just be able to tell you, that is an easy way to find out if you don't have another method to use. They just need to, you know, see how much maximum deflection that you actually have on the transmitter and then tell you how much as a percentage roughly that you're actually using. Or a much better way to do this is to simply log how much of the stick you're using. So the perfect way to do this, I use Spectrum. I'm very familiar with how the Spectrum stuff works. So the way that I do this is I data log my radio input stick. I look at my telemetry log and I'm able to identify exactly how much of the stick I'm using. So what I do typically is I start the data log and then I go through the mins and maximums of the stick so that I'm able to see exactly how much I'm using when I'm at my maximum. And then I go take off and fly and then land and come back. Then I look at the data and see exactly how much of the stick I'm using. If I find that I'm only using about 70% of my stick, this is significantly reducing the amount of resolution potential that I have. If I'm going for, let's say, an aileron roll and I'm smashing that stick at the 70% of the range of the transmitter, I'm essentially wasting all of the resolution that I can be getting from that 70 to 100% stick travel motion here. That is some significant amount of resolution and precision that I'm able to gain for other types of flying. In a situation like that, it would suggest to me that I can tone down the rates of my ailerons in order to use more of the stick. Now I do the exact same thing with the rudder and with the elevator and apply that to those as well. On the flip side of the equation here, how do you know that you don't quite have enough rates programmed into your radio or set up within your radio controlled airplane? Well, the simple way to identify this is you go to perform that maneuver, but you don't have enough authority or control deflection in order to perform that maneuver correctly. In this case, in order to perform the maneuver correctly, you're going to have to add more throw. It could be as simple as you ending up bottoming the stick out in a corner within the radio transmitter, and this is where you realize that you don't have enough to perform that maneuver correctly. In this case, all you need to do is set up your radio control model to give you a little bit more throw at the cost of some resolution in order to perform those aerobatics. Now here's more of a pro tip for you for the elevator. So how do you know how much elevator you should actually have? Well, a good way for me to identify for myself how much elevator I require on a radio controlled plane is essentially when I'm coming in for landing. This is when the plane is as slow as it possibly can get. My rule of thumb is I only need as much elevator as it takes to just stall the airplane during the landing part of my flight. When I'm able to stall the airplane, that is essentially more than I need already, and that's what I use as a baseline. Any more elevator than that would essentially be a waste since I'm already able to stall the airplane with that minimum amount. 
Since I've adopted my new rule of thumb for the elevator, I have significantly been able to clean up all of my landings. I don't nearly balloon the airplane as much as I have in the past. It's very difficult for some airplanes, especially if you're new to them, to really know where that stall point is. And when you're trying to hunt and find the, for that stall point in order to flare for your landing, you may find that you're over ballooning the airplane and it goes and jumps right back up into the air before it is able to fully touch down. Another area where I find having lower rates so much more beneficial is for those panic moments or for those moments when you're just nervous. You may have, you know, one of those twitchy thumbs on your first few flights of an aircraft and everyone gets it, you know, at some point in their flying career for radio control models. Having lower rates just allows this to tone any of those, you know, the noise that comes out of your thumbs or fingers as you're moving on the sticks ever so slightly. Especially if you have one of those panic moments where you're flying the airplane, something out of the blue happens and you just happen to just pull out out of panic and the plane just all of a sudden turns 90 degrees vertical and heads straight up for just what you thought is, a, is just a simple knee-jerk reaction that you had on the stick. I have here a couple clips where I'm flying on the simulator, one with extremely high rates, you know, what I would consider extremely high rates, but this might be normal rates to others, and then one with more normal rates, probably on the low end for someone that is not used to them. So let's go ahead and watch those clips. Big thing to focus on here is exactly how much of the sticks I'm using in these high rates mode. So we'll pick up the gear and we'll set up for an aileron roll to the right. It's really snappy, a lot more snappy than I was expecting. So I'm gonna come around. I'm not using hardly any stick to make these, these turns. It's honestly a little bit difficult for me to keep the plane pointed in the direction that I really want it to go. So as I go and roll out of this loop here, a little tight, I need to pull it on the end here just to get it to come back to the height that I actually entered in. So I'm trying to find adjust the where I'm pointing the plane. I'm gonna turn around, drop the gear, and set myself up for a landing here. Uh, again, pay attention to those sticks. I'm going to use hardly any of them in order to get this plane back on the ground. The slightest little bit of motion has a big impact here. So we'll just flare right there, get the flare in and try and figure that out. Looks like I got it back on the ground in one piece. Excellent, so let's flip over. Now we got the rate set much lower, so this should be a lot more smooth and you should be able to also see the stick and how much more of the stick I'm using. So we'll do the same thing. In fact, this time we'll roll the other way. So I'll go for the left roll right now. Nice and slow roll, looks good. And that was almost pretty well full stick to do that. So that's nice and controlled. I'm able to get the plane rotated all the way around here, get myself set up so that I can get right over in the middle of the field to do the roll. We're gonna start the roll right now. And we'll pull the plane all the way to the top and come out of it at the bottom. Felt a lot more smooth. I don't know if it looked as smooth as it felt. There, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go a little bit left here and drop the gear, get set up for a nice controlled landing. You can see how much more of the stick I'm actually using here. More of the stick is used. I can precisely position myself for this landing. So we'll come in and we'll set the plane down right somewhere on the runway here and do our flare last second right about now. So we're gonna flare it down. And we got the plane back down in one piece. So there you can see the big difference being how much control I need to use on the stick now. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you're able to take something away and this can help smooth out your flight, smooth out those landings for you. You know, even if you are the one who does believe that you need those high rates, it doesn't hurt to experiment, to try something new. You never know when trying something new can improve your, your flying experience as a whole. And as always, like the video if you do, check out the link in the description below so that you can become a patron of the RC Explained community. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.